Good morning, um, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, uh, episode 325. Uh, each week uh, we meet here to answer the questions asked on the SEO Questions community on Google+. Plus. Until tomorrow, of course, when Google Plus closes down. Um, and um, also the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, we have David Rosam. David uh, is a leading internet marketer based in the sunny south of England, uh, in West Sussex. Uh, David uh, can be found at writingforseo.org and davidrosam.com. Micah Fisher Kirshner is uh, on the east coast of the USA, not too far from Silicon Valley. Uh, Micah is head of SEO for Turn River Capital uh, in the United States. Uh, he's also, uh, uh, is it CEO or um, of, of your uh, meetup group, uh, Micah? Yeah, uh, just president. President. Yeah. Or, yeah. So there's you and Donald. Yeah, uh, me and me and Andrew. Okay. Um, Mike is uh, also uh, president of uh, a group of SEOs uh, in uh, the USA. And um, uh, Tim Kappa. Uh, Tim is uh, we uh, um, CEO of onlineownership.com. Uh, he uh, is also a Google product expert on the uh, Google My Business community. And Masataki Wasa is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Uh, uh, Tim's based uh, 100 miles north of London. Masataki uh, is in central London uh, at uh, Wimbledon. And um, Masataki is also a Google product expert in the uh, AdSense uh, community. All right, let's uh, look at our first question tonight. This one from Charisma Ryan Tory Summers. Um, she has a question that's titled, Learn It Myself or Should I Take an SEO Crash Course? Charisma said, I have some basic understanding of SEO, but I'm looking to advance myself in that area as I've got no resources to hire a professional yet. Mainly so I can write better blog posts, website pages, product descriptions, and so on, on my own uh, e-commerce um, e website. I was looking for, I was searching for a crash course on SEO and came across one. Um, is, is this a good one to get? I'm all ears if you have better suggestions. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not, not entirely sure about a course because, yeah, uh, look, there's plenty of resources out there that you can, you know, Google has one, Moz has a pretty good one. Um, <coughs> there's a lot of free resources out there. Um, I would probably go with those. Uh, first, uh, before you start going through, um, you know, uh, paying for courses. Um, yeah, I'd probably start with the free resources. Yeah, I agree. And Michael Martin is, uh, you know, I should call out, he's, a, he's a, uh, one of our forum heroes. He looks after people throughout the week uh, as questions are asked on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. But uh, Michael has listed um, um, the Bing web, Webmaster uh, Guidelines, um, Google Webmaster Guidelines, um, and a YouTube um, how-to. Um, and yeah, look, I, I um, really, I don't know of anyone promoting a, 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 a an online 
um, SEO course that's worth uh, uh, worthwhile looking at. Anyone think of any? Uh, I mean, there is some courses that they have host at schools online. Uh, well, for example, like Aaron, Eric Ange and a few, like one down at San Diego State, they do have <coughs> um, some courses there. But generally, uh, you know, there's a lot of available reading. It's just knowing where to go. It's probably the biggest thing. Um, and I know, like, Mar Michael Martinez has, has, has ho helped to provide a few things in there. So it, it, it depends on what you're trying to get and trying to, like, have help along with along the way that might be interesting um type courses but yeah it's mostly something where you have to self kind of taught and go out and and do yourself is usually the best yeah i think the issue is that you have to learn if you like the principles and those are outlined in the documents that michael posted and i think what sort of some of the courses and what people do and perhaps concentrate too much on is if you like the um the finer tactics as it were rather than looking at the bigger picture so if you're going to start i would really start with the sort of the basics the big picture the principles that should guide you through what you do rather than looking at the sort of the techniques that people employ yeah and uh, i did point out uh, to uh, charisma that um um on dumbseoquestions.com we have uh, an archive of uh, every recording we're up to 300 and uh, 325 now it took us about five years to do that um and uh, we've got some archive footage of tim kappa when he was still a a young man um okay all right let's move on to the next nine questions tonight this is number two which cms to choose uh, will tisdall uh, has asked a question that it, it, he's specified that he's a total seo novice um, he'd like to hear opinions on whether the, the CMS, Drupal slash WordPress, et cetera, um, with which uh, a website is built, uh, does it make a tangible difference to ranking for key search terms? Uh, furthermore, um, if uh, there is a difference, uh, which uh, CMS, if any, would be preferable? Thanks in advance. Oh, this is a wonderful piece of streamline, isn't it? Um, yes, all, all or none is the answer. Um, my my view. Except Wix. Uh, Don't go with Wix. <laughs> sorry. Except Wix. Don't go with Wix. Oh yeah, don't go with Wix. So I, I was I was taking the. Uh, <laughs> oh, taking the choice as being uh, WordPress. Uh, Drupal, or I was going to add Joomla because that's the other big beastie. Um, and <laughs> as, a, uh, as a not total code head, um, I find Drupal and uh, Joomla a lot of hard work. Um, if you're a complete novice, you'll find WordPress a lot of hard work to begin with as well, to be honest. But um, if you're going to struggle with WordPress, you're going to kill yourself with Drupal or uh, over Drupal or Joomla, uh, you really will have a hard time. Um, so um, <clears throat> I think I think my answer is WordPress, but not because it's uh, any better um, than the other two um, as far as SEO is concerned. But, you know, there's lots and lots of things you can do with WordPress. There are... Was it fifty thousand plugins or something stupid out there? Which itself is a is a bit of a downside. Whenever I'm looking for plugins, I spend ages looking for the things because there's always a choice of about twenty of them. Um, <clears throat> so yes, um, and the other good thing about WordPress is that there's loads and loads and loads of help out there. If you get stuck and you want to 
hire someone, there's um, there's everything from the very cheapest to the very most expensive, um, and they're all on tap, and probably a lot of them uh, live around the corner from you. So uh, possibly WordPress, but uh, not for the reasons that you uh, uh, that you think. Yeah, for me personally, um, you know, for a you know a small mid-sized business that doesn't have in-house developers or anything like that, uh, or even if they do, um, I'd probably say on a WordPress platform. Obviously, I'm not talking about templates. I'm talking about custom, custom built. Obviously, you want a developer that has some kind of uh, nouns about them. Um, you know, so you don't have to rely on plugins, et cetera, et cetera. It all gets custom built for you, but you have then the longevity of updating and maintaining the content on your site with the ease of the WordPress platform um, and adding to it and articles and, you know, you can integrate your, your mail campaigns, et cetera. Um, if you're going down the road of something like, yeah, like, you know, Drupal and, and, and um, Joomla and that you're gonna you're gonna need an in-house developer that knows what he's doing. Um, there are, uh, yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, for even up to you know, I would say a custom built on the on, on the WordPress platform is a really good option. You're not then reliant on plugins, and obviously you still have the option of using them if you wanted to do something, but custom built. Um, and uh you know it's uh, for longevity you know um it's not going away um that would be my you know uh my choice in you know thank you tim all right let's call it a wrap for um will and um hope uh, we've um, managed to shed some light for him Let's uh, look at one for Brenda Michelin. Uh, it's an image optimization question. Um, she said, when I'm using paid for stock images, I have been optimizing for size uh, and removing the EXIF uh, information. Uh, is this legal? Should I be leaving the copyright information? Um, it depends where you're getting the images from. Um, Oh, you're using paid for stock images. Well, um, uh, you're going to have to check on, on on where you're getting them from and what their what their thing is. But if you've paid for it, I think you can remove it. Yeah. Uh, but you'll need to check what and which ones, because there's other you know everyone every one of these site, sites are different. Um, but here's a little thing: there are a lot of free image sites out there. Um, there. There are a lot of them out there. So when you go with that, you know. Yeah, it depends on the ISIS, doesn't it? So I think some image, you know, some providers will, or some photographers, the original creators, would demand certain things. So it's impossible to say one way or the other you have to look up the exact licensing agreement that you have with that site or that creator yeah and also i'd, I'd use the google search for this image on google for other sizes of it uh, and just make sure that it's not on uh, um one of the stock images sites like um um, Getty Images, um, because uh, they are just rogues, thieving, rotten mongrels. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I'd make sure I'd stay well away from anything from Getty and also their other one, I can't think of it, um, iStock Photo, they, they, they bought that out. They're great. I noticed a trend there, they're buying a lot of the... Uh, old stock image sites um the smaller ones um to get more fodder to um frighten people and suck sucker people into uh, paying their uh, blackmail rates anyway brenda i hope that's useful to you and let's go to number four it's um focusing on the other keyword i want to rank for 
but it's also from Charisma Ryan Tory Summers. Uh, she said, I'm looking to rank my website uh, on other keywords. Currently, it only ranks for one keyword, whimsical jewellery. Uh, I was advised to essentially create similar pages to my home page, but each page would focus on the other keyword I want to rank on, i.e. Uh, one page for art jewellery, another page for artful jewellery, and so on. Um, well, no. So you're not going to go and create a page. You could go and create a page. So, um, so let's say your your whole site, the whole thing is, and or your name. You know, it's like whimsical jewelry, and you can certainly have categories in that to help people navigate through the types of things. But you're not going to go create a category with where, and separate your products with art jewelry and then art full jewelry. Your art full is what you should incorporate within your, your writing or other content on the site or things that would benefit or, or you know, your art jewelry, okay? You're not going to incorporate those two. You're not going to have, you know, so, um, so call it art jewelry. Um, if it's whimsical, okay, let's just say you've got fairies in there. You could have another one with uh, fairy fairy jewelry, or it might not have fairies in it, but you it's kind of all pink and stuff. So you might want to separate if you've got a lot of kind of products out there. You you may want to so you could separate it by art and fairy and fluffy and whatever, twinkle toe, but you're not going to have art and artful because you want to you know google's going to kind of understand you want to you want to include that kind of conf content into it you may even create um some kind of guides to different uh, on your jewelry and within that you may incorporate the word artful but i don't, I don't know how i mean <laughs> but no so just to answer your question you're not going to go and create category pages just for just for keywords that um they will be you know they'll be thin <coughs> you may not even have products or you may be duplicating products to fill up those pages it's not gonna it's not going to benefit anyone it's not going to benefit your users um it's not gonna you know do do anything for you but certainly if you need to split up and describe some of your jewelry pieces a bit better you can certainly have a category for that provide a little bit of information or a bit of background on you know what your thought process is on that particular kind of design and what you've you know just natural language and within that natural language you're typically incorporating some of the searched terms um, that people are looking for you you also need to remember when you say oh my keywords artful jewelry how many people actually kind of search for that so you need you know maybe 20 years ago people used to just go two words like short short tail but as you've probably noticed a short tail search query 90 percent of the time just doesn't give you what you're looking for because there's just so much information people then go and refine their search to um you know people go and re refine their search to narrow it down because your interpretation of artful jewelry is going to be something let's say this was a main kind of search query it's going to be different to someone else's and then they will actually you know refine their search to to, to find something that they're actually looking for so they might go artful jewelry with fairy wings right and that will refine it down. So you need to be descriptive. You, need, you know, you need to be uh, very descriptive on your things, um, you know, your, your actual product pages uh, on the images. You need to really describe the images properly so that you, 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 you incorporate what people are searching for. The only people that search for like shiny jewelry are men when it's like they've missed their anniversary. They're like, oh shit. Right, and then it's like jewelry. But the, the point is, someone that's actually searching for something that's quite niche are going to use longer tail. 
So think about guides, just you know, guides to the jewelry, what you're, you know, um, what it works with. Think about um, possibly having a page if you've got different stuff describing, like I said, your, your thought process behind this particular range that you, you're making. Why, you know, you've created this, what were your thoughts and feelings behind it? Um, who would it appeal to? Uh, things like that, yeah. So start thinking about a user and how they're going to find it. Nobody searches artful jewelry. Um, people will search more specific things. Um, just think about how you search things. Yeah. Good one, Tim. All right. There will, any any other contributions before we move on? Okay. This one from Neil Cheeseman. Does the content below lo, below load more? Oh, does the content below load more get indexed? Um, he said repagination slash load more. Does the content below load more get indexed where it doesn't get displayed in the cache version of a url does that mean that it isn't indexed or not related I don't know. Um, have you um, have you done a fetch and render on it? What happens there? Um, I wonder if that will tell you what's uh, what's likely to happen as far as spidering. Yeah, I see Michael M Martin is in the comments said uh, fetch and render is supposed to show you what yeah. Google can index. As a rule of thumb, they suggest you assume anything that loaded afterwards is never seen by Googlebot. Um, oh, what's the name of the browser that um, it's a text only uh, browser? Um, oh, it's got a punning name, hasn't it? Yeah, I can't think of it, but um, yes, anyway, that, that is specific because. Um, the Googlebot um, follows what what that browser um, can read, and if if uh, that browser, that text only browser, um, can't read it, then um, um, you can be assured that uh, Googlebot can't. Anyway, um, I, yeah, I got it fixed. Okay, let's move on to the next. Hope uh, that's useful to you, Neil. I see uh, Dave Elliott's um, you know, Google's uh, announcement um, that um, they're, they're not doing anything about um, um, paginated pages. Um, that, that's caused a little bit of passion. Um, JL Faverio asks a question. It's titled Yellow Pages and Duplicate Content. Um, JL Faverio said, I don't even know how to ask this question, but here goes. We have two separate clients spending money with Yellow Pages where they have uh, created a secondary website for their business. The websites are not indexed in Google, yet Yellow Pages still runs a Google Ads campaign going to the secondary website. And uh, even worse, a, a separate subdomain is where the Google ads are pointing to. Other than Yellow Pages taking advantage of small business owners, um, is this uh, not also a duplicate content issue? Well, you said they're not indexed, so it's sort of not going to be a duplicate content issue. But uh, you know, let's say they were indexed. I mean, how, um, you know, uh, 
what was what was on there um you know the, possibly the name is the same of the business and the contact details but essentially um they should have their own independent um information on there i mean i know yellow page sites are are, are pretty are, are, well, well they, they just dire but um they normally have their their own writers uh, give you a description and stuff uh, about the business and the services so it's it's not a, a, a duplicate uh, just think of it as like a web 2.0 property um but yeah i mean they are crap that you know they're they ads the ads adwords they run for for clients it's overpriced it's horrendous you know just just um get, just get convince them to get rid of yellow pages man um but yeah it's not necessarily um a duplicate issue even if they work even if they were um think of it you know and depending on the size of it think of it as just a a, a bigger uh, you know a citation the problem you're going to have is you know if it's um if it's on a um if it's on like um you know a, a pretty well branded or well authority to like subdomain um on the yellow page thing um it might rank your client site be, you know obviously before you started working on it um and it, it, it might outrank that um I don't think they're 301 there things if you even wanted to tell them to take it down I don't think it's 301 um, but even then I don't think it's still a problem uh, depends how how dodgy they are you know I don't think it would be viewed as a gateway because it's not particularly you know it's it's just a page about the business but you're gonna have to make a decision on that but just get your client to get rid of it man it's yeah yeah, I think um, that's a, a, a good rule of thumb. If it's yellow pages, then get rid of it because they don't know anything about SEO. They just well, the, the only thing SEO about uh, those yellow pages things is the, the 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 word on the invoice because they're totally clueless. Okay, they charge and they charge a lot. Yeah, I mean, I have people phoning me up going like, and I'm like, how much are they charging? And they're literally charging a couple of hundred quid a month. It's just insane. For what? I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah, it's they just it's rip off merchants, man. Hmm. Well, did, let me point out, um, because um, uh, it's just struck me, yeah, why I love dumb SEO questions. Look at the quality of... Um, the answer is uh, um, not wishing to take anything away from the illustrious people that actually appear live. Um, but uh, Steve Wiedemann, Michael Stricker, we saw uh, um, Michael Martinez before, Dave Elliott, um, all of those people, we're, we're truly grateful uh, for their contribution. Okay, let's go to Andres Philippe Echevarria's question, number seven on our run list. He said, I create the menu after the page is loaded. He said, our company just implemented uh, the hamburger drop-down menu. That's the um, four, what, three or four parallel lines um, that um, it's really a uh, mobile um, menu element. Um, he said, we just implemented hamburger drop down menu javascript in desktop and we are not able to get the menu links in into google's cache uh, that's because google can't read javascript anymore or never could that maybe they just lied um we're not loading the menu on user click but on the page load but still it could be that the menu is loaded after the dom load and where Google might have already crawled the page um, before even uh, um, the menu is loaded. To mitigate this, apart from uh, that menu, we are loading all the menu links in the page source on the server side in a hidden div, which is a bad thing. 
Um, so it cannot be that um, links are not available to Google. See our paid source attached. Uh, is this a good approach to get the links on, on in Google's cache? Don't fight over this one. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, if this is, let's see. Um, <clears throat> so he's loading. Yeah, if you're loading a menu after the page is loaded, you're effectively, you know, um, you're hiding it. Uh, and after page load, Google's kind of generally done. I, obviously, if they're coming back and, and then reevaluating, that's a different thing. Um, but yeah, you can't. Cash, well, so first off, cash is not, uh, yeah, Michael's got a lot of the good stuff there. Like, cash is not an indicator. You need to uh, look at the mobile version of the site and then run a, um, run the tools that Google has available to see about that. Um, ideally, I would, yeah, yeah, you, the, the older version is generally better than the newer one when it comes to kind of giving a view of what the page looks like, but, um, today they've probably removed it. <laughs> so you're stuck with the new version of Google Search Console, which you can you can run. Um, there's a lot of potential reasons for why your nav may be broken um, or may not look like it is so. And uh, let's see what we got, Jason. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know the reasoning for why you're throwing that in JavaScript. It really shouldn't be. Um, you're you're basically going to delay your site from getting indexed, uh, or those links from from even showing up because they have to come back around, and it's a crawl crawl hog on something like that. Um, if your whole site is in JavaScript, okay, like that, you know, then you're you're having to do a setup. But even then, like standard best practice is to put that in kind of more of a CSS uh, or menu like menu drop downs than it is using some form of JavaScript. So um, I don't have the uh, image available to kind of, or the site available on hand to, to look into it, but um, really like look at the mobile, run it through Google. If it's not showing up, um, you know, that's definitely gonna be an issue. Uh, generally the simplest way around it is just don't use JavaScript for this. Um, you're, you're fundamentally, Trying to do SEO with you know w you know running on one leg, um, it, you're you're essentially going to always be behind other sites um, because of that. Uh, for those that aren't using JavaScript, your their sites are going to get looked at viewed faster and evaluated more properly faster than than your site would be otherwise. Um, but beyond that, yeah, other things to look at is take a look at the order of where you've put stuff. Um, Sometimes if you put a lot of other scripts uh, or uh, legal, uh, improperly put in a, 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 like a frame in your head content, then you know the, it's going to break anything that goes after that. And so your page might not be properly rendered as a result. So um, scripts and code order matters uh, when it comes to things in the head. So you may want to look into those things as well. Um, so, yeah. Excellent, Micah. Anybody else? Okay, N number eight on our run list uh, is from Michaelis APK. It's titled SEO Benefits of Adding Open Graph Tags and Twitter Cards. Michaelis uh, said, hi everyone. Weird question, Has have any of you seen any SEO benefits by simply adding open graph tags and Twitter cards uh, uh, to their site. Um, are there any uh, interesting uh, case studies? Uh, does anyone uh, have this monitored for their site? Mm, not on my end. I mean, it's basically, I mean, they're meant for, Social. They're not really meant for 
anything on the fancy end. I mean, the best you're going to get is essentially um, people are more likely to actually click the, after hitting share, actually submitting their share if it looks nice and it's more likely to stand out on social, which in turn gets more people to potentially go to your site and learn about it and link to it and et cetera. But there is nothing generally that I'm aware of that directly will benefit your site um, by having those in the first place. Yeah, Open Graph and Twitter cards are very limited, aren't they, compared to um, schema.org, for example. I think if you implement yeah. schema properly, then I think that does help. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, the schema side, which is uh, things like reviews or breadcrumbs, events, those types of things, that's a whole different story because those then can show up on a search result and look and have your site stand out as a result. Yeah, but yeah, I think uh, the way I see it is that Open Graph and Twitter cards are useful in that um, you know for social, but I can't see how that will have any SEO benefits as such. Yeah, I agree. All right, let's um, go to our last question for the night from Jay Lowe. Uh, it's titled Data in GDS. Uh, um, is it GDS is a new name for Google Search Console, is it? Um, and, um, oh no, 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 Google Data or something or other. Um, and Google Analytics is different. He said, recently I found the goal completion data in Google Data Studio, oh, Google Data Studio, sometimes fails to match the data in Google Analytics when sampling occurs. According to the Data Studio guide, Data Studio uses the same sampling behavior as Google Analytics, but maybe not the same data. Um, so theoretically, the data shouldn't be different. Um, is there anyone has has anyone ever found uh, your goal completion da data in Google Data Studio and Google Analytics um, turned out differently? Let me know about your experience. Thanks. Uh, I'm not a user of Google Data Studio, so um, I can't really tell. Can't really contribute. I'll confess that I haven't either. Yeah, I mean, it gets worse because like the data that goes from Search Console into GA is different, and uh, yeah, um, that's. I, I, I'm trying to remember because I'm like currently not using uh, Data Studio for the for the purposes of some of my stuff right now. But I, I'm not surprised that they would be using kind of some of the sampling if you're trying to go too far back and trying to add your, you know, pull all stuff together. And um, given the free version of GA, you know, if you hit data, like sampling, then that sampling is what's gonna get sent over. So I'm not shocked that that's the case, that, um, you know, that's what you get for a free product, basically, is the limitations of what you can do, the accuracy suffers. Uh, you get directionally, and most of the time the data is close enough. But um, when you're trying to like match things up perfectly, you know, without without paying for um, the premium uh, and other things, other tools that are more paid, you're not going to get the hyper targeted accuracy you're looking for. Thank you, Mike. Anybody else? Okay, it looks as though, yes, it's thank you for watching time. We've done it again. We've answered all of the questions asked on the SEO questions community on Google Plus and the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. I'd like to thank uh, David Roseanne, Masataki Wasa, Micah fisher Kirshner, and uh, uh, Tim Kappa. Um, for your contribution uh, tonight. 
Um, we'll be back uh, at the same time uh, next week uh, to do this uh, all again. But for now, it's uh, good night.